You've probably had this before. Runny nose, fever, sore throat, cough, headache, and even muscle or joint pain. Well, these are all common symptoms of the flu, also known as influenza. Most people get better within two to three days, but there are situations when influenza can lead to something more severe, such as pneumonia. How worried should you be about the complications triggered by influenza and who's most at risk? And of course, does the flu shot help? We asked two health experts and here's what they said. So in Singapore, influenza tends to occur all through the year, uh, but we have small peaks and those peaks are thought to be related to the school holidays when a lot of people are traveling. So we get small peaks in May, June and in November, December. But they are not as high as the winter peaks that you see in both the northern and southern hemispheres. Children, young children, especially under five years old, and particularly under two years old, their immune systems are still developing and making them more vulnerable to severe influenza. Second group, elderly adults above 65 years old. Uh, it's well known when you get older, your immune system goes down, increasing the risk of severe illness. So that's the second group. Pregnant mothers and postpartum mothers please get vaccinated because pregnancy lowers the immune system, uh, makes it more dangerous for the influenza virus also. When you're talking about severe complications of influenza, that tends to affect those with uh, weakened immune systems. In addition, you have some people who have normal immune systems except they have chronic lung disease, uh, and this includes smokers. So their immunity is normal except for their lungs, uh, and then they are more at risk of uh, complications of influenza. While most cases of flu do not lead to pneumonia, those that do tend to be more severe and deadly. But how does that happen? That is when the virus itself actually directly infects the lungs. And when it happens, there's significant lung inflammation, fluid production, and therefore it leads to fluid buildup in the lungs, which is known as pneumonia. And as a result, the patient is it's very difficult to breathe and feels very constricted, okay? This is a potentially deadly situation. The other situation uh, is when a bacteria, such as the pneumococcus, gets into the lungs together with the influenza virus, either from uh, contact with someone else or more commonly from the patient's own nose. A very simple rule of thumb is most people with the flu get better within two or three days. Most of the brunny nose, blocked nose, the fever especially, should have been settled or settling. However, now I have increasing cough, green phlegm, yellow phlegm, whatever color that comes out. And I'm feeling more short of breath, feeling more tired. And yet the fever is still not really gone yet by the third day. And if this patient comes back to see me in clinic, I would highly suspect pneumonia for such a patient. And I would be listening to the lungs more thoroughly. Besides pneumonia, people with weakened immune systems also risk facing other complications. Interestingly enough, influenza is one of the viruses which is known to trigger an asthma attack. So once you have an, a bad uh, bout of influenza, um, the immune system is kind of dysregulated. What that means is instead of just getting rid of the influenza, it tends to overreact and it can cause a narrowing of the airways. And that's essentially what happens when you get an asthma attack. The other category is those people who have cancer, who are on chemotherapy, and their immune systems are too weak to respond to what would, in the rest of us, just be a mild viral infection. And so they can get severe complications of influenza, including pneumonia, and very rarely brain or heart inflammation. Influenza really takes a toll, okay? Um, can possibly trigger heart attacks also in, the, in this population. The next population is for diabetics. The sugar control can actually go out whack. Now let's talk about getting the flu jab. When is a good time to get one? And what other preventive measures can you take? Well, here's what you need to know before you book that doctor's appointment. In general, the basic rule is that you need to uh, take good care of your health, your nutrition, your rest, um, practice good personal hygiene. For the general public, the best protection is annual influenza vaccination. Unfortunately, the virus changes every year into a new variant. So we need a new flu shot every year because in reality, the treatment is the same. 
the antiviral drugs are the same, that those that are currently in use, and the prevention is the same. But what if you just recovered from your flu? That should leave you immune to the virus, right? Well, not quite. Here's why you should still get your flu shot. So even if you recovered from one strain of influenza, okay, you are not immune, you, are, you do not have antibodies to protect against the rest of the other strains of influenza. And therefore, I would highly encourage vaccination also to cover the other strains. Because what you got infected with in the first place may not actually have been influenza unless you got tested for it. But even if you did get proven influenza, there's also the possibility that you may have the bad luck to get infected with another strain. And if you're travelling, getting that flu shot just a day before your trip might not really be a good idea. Here's why. I think you should get vaccinated about two to three weeks uh, before you travel. And the main reason is because your immune system needs to take some time uh, to get prepared so that when it encounters the influenza virus in some crowded uh, shopping mall or train station, that you're ready to deal with it. And it doesn't have the opportunity to travel from your nose or your throat into your lungs. So is getting a flu vaccination enough to prevent influenza from developing into pneumonia? The pneumococcal uh, vaccine is recommended, but it tends to be for those who are older individuals and those with certain medical conditions. So the pneumococcal vaccine protects you against bacteria. It doesn't protect you against the flu virus. But as I mentioned, the flu virus can actually predispose you to a bacterial infection because it can carry the bacteria or it not so much carry, but make it easier for the bacteria which is living in your nose to get down into your lungs and cause you pneumonia. But then again, you don't need the pneumococcal vaccine every year, unlike the flu vaccine. It really depends on a case-to-case -case basis. But the main overriding principle is if you have never ever got vaccinated, there is no better time than the present.